Hey YouTube, what up Pink Ladies and T-Birds, it's your girl Jimmy Pink. Today is October 24th, day 24 of the Hunt for Pink October, where I wear pink every day from October 1st to October 31st and do a video every day to raise money and awareness for breast cancer awareness. So let's go ahead and knock the link out. So let's talk about this Drake Two Birds One Stone. And for those of my pink ladies and tea birds or happen to be reviewers or watchers of my shit, um, this review is going to go a little bit differently. Um, first of all, so it's this this song, highly implied that it's about Pusha T and King, Kid King and Kid Cudi, and overall. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm trying not to put my bias into it, but it's okay. Like, first of all, I'm a huge Clips fan. I love Pusha T. Pusha T is like this generation's Red Man to me. What I mean by that is Red Man always had the respect of like the hip hop heads because he was very skilled. But he kept it grimy, so he had the respect of, like, the street dudes, too. But for whatever reason, he had mainstream success, but for whatever reason, when we're talking about the GOATs, his name does not enter the conversation. And the reason why I say Pusha T reminds me of that is because as somebody, as a hip-hop head, when the clips came out, that shit blew my mind. I always liked Pusha T for all the way from grinding. Like, I just thought he had a unique voice, a unique delivery. He could put together a punchline nice. Like, the boy nice. He nice. But he spit dope boy raps. So, when you take somebody like my other person, I don't never know what to call his ass, um, who whose background is that kind of lifestyle, like, he loved Pusha T because he, like, you know, he understands, you know, street shit and we were just listening to Pusha T a couple days ago and I had said that I said he reminds me of Red Man I said because he got the respect from like these two totally different worlds of hip hop where you got like the street niggas but then you also got like the hip hop heads that's praising them but when we talking about who is the hottest rappers out nobody fucking says Pusha T with that being said Drake decided he wants to take shots at Pusha T I'm gonna go ahead and Kid Cudi which I'm going to assume, assume, like, okay, you and Kanye need to quit drinking the brown liquor and smoking whatever y'all smoking because both of y'all motherfuckers is tripping right now. You got Kanye snapping on Jay-Z for not coming to see him and his wife after his wife got robbed. First of all, like I said, this review is going to go all the way to the left, so I'm sorry. I apologize. Whereas... And the kids ain't never been to the house. Maybe Jay-Z and Beyonce don't want their daughter in 15,000 pictures on Instagram in one day. You know what I'm saying? You can't be mad at that. And Kim was robbed. She wasn't hurt. They didn't. She wasn't hurt. They didn't rape her. She wasn't beaten. Like, you're lucky you got a phone call. Maybe they just don't like your wife, bro. At least they did call. So, with that being said... Excuse me for that. Kid Cudi and Pusha T are both associated with good music, which is Kanye's level. Hell, Pusha T the president. So you working with Kanye and you gonna diss the president of his label and that shit cool? Like, you done been, Drake, you done been around Kanye too long. We already know Kanye is nutty cuckoo and he can kind of fly off the handle and say some shit even though he got red for filth for coming for Jay-Z and Beyonce because the hive is strong. And Jay-Z already had his own fan base, but when he married Beyonce, he inherited the hive and the hive is strong, okay? The force is strong with the motherfucking beehive, okay? So he didn't get drug for filth. Now you want to come out here and drag the president of his label, which I don't see how that's okay. Especially if y'all are working on an album, I don't see how that's okay. And when y'all letting that ride. But the but the burner 
towards that he threw towards Pusha T, like tell him Pusha T, like you out here, like you El Chapo, and all you was doing was chopping up sacks of weed. Like, okay, valid fucking disses, valid disses, solid disses, good shit. Excuse me for a moment. Now, here's where I have a little bit of an issue at. And I'm no no social justice warrior. I'm not easily offended, and all is all is fair in love and hip hop. But Drake, you not that dude. Drake, you not that dude. Nobody would have batted an eye if Eminem would have came for Kid Cudi and said something while Kid Cudi is going through. His mental health issues. Nobody would have batted an eye. Nobody would have batted an eye if it was Lil Wayne. You know why? Because these are not give a fuck motherfuckers. These is I give no fucks motherfuckers. So even though people would have thought it was wrong, it wouldn't have been as shocking. Because we already know, hey, they say whatever the fuck come out their mouth on a regular basis. You think it was going to be any different because Kid Cudi is in rehab for... His depression. Motherfuckers still would have been like that was a low blow, but they wouldn't care. Drake, you not that dude. You not that dude. Most of your songs, you, honest to God, may need to go see a doctor because I believe you suffer from some forms of fucking depression. Because when people write music, I'm saying this to somebody that is a former artist. When someone writes music, and you see the same theme come up in their music all the time. It's because that is a part of them. Am I surprised Kid Cudi has depression? No, because all the way, all the way back to day and night, the motherfucker been talking about being a loner and lonely and sad and blue. He been talking about that. It's no different than a Kurt Cobain, a Phyllis Hyman. You know, you go back and you listen to their music and you like them was warning signs. Them people had problems. They was telling us this shit in their music and we fucking ignored it. Now, what I'm going to say is this. I'm not going to drag Drake for saying it. Um, but I understand why the social justice warriors is pissed off. In fact, I probably should be a little bit more pissed off myself because I have anxiety and panic disorder. The stigma in the black community for somebody to actually have a mental disorder is huge. Nobody wants to believe it happens. That's why we self-medicate. That's why another reason why you have all these rappers to talk about how much they smoke weed and drink is because they're self-medicating and they have a mental health disorder. But it's shown as weakness, and especially in the black community, period, but especially as a black man. So with that being said... The reason why Drake is getting drugged for filth like he is, is because Drake, for lack of a better word, is supposed to be the compassionate rapper. All you do is moan and cry and bitch on your songs. You're supposed to be the compassionate rapper. So this man took this brave step to say, I'm having suicidal thoughts. I'm suffering from depression. I'm having a problem and I need to get my brain clear. Mind you, did this happen, happen after he snapped on a Twitter rant? Yes. You think maybe that's because he was going through this shit and he was having episodes? So as somebody that has a mental health disorder myself, and I'm guilty because I, I self-medicate. Like, I don't want to be on no pills. Like, if this will calm you down, no, I still want to feel. So I understand that. But I am diagnosed with it, and I do know I have it, and I definitely see my own symptoms in it. It's very dangerous not to take medication, but I don't have nothing that's... I'm, I'm not depressive. It's, I'm not going to be suicidal if I don't take anxiety medication. I may just have panic attack a little bit more often. Or I may, you know, freak freak out and just not feel right about some shit. And if you have anxiety disorder or panic disorder, you'll understand that. Um, I just more so choose to 
meditate and self-medicate. And usually I've gotten to the point now where I can almost pinpoint when I'm feeling anxious that if it's going to be that bad, I can take a pill. Or just know, okay, on this day, and just for me, obviously, if y'all watch my videos, y'all know I have a type of job where I don't have to deal with a lot of people for most of the time. If I know that's coming, I can kind of just stay to myself and pass it over. Everybody can't do that. Obviously, Kia Cuddy couldn't do that. So, he took the steps he did for him to be healthier to not off himself. He should be congratulated about that. So, for now, Drake, to perpetuate this myth about a black man having a mental health disorder, that being some kind of weakness, and now all of a sudden you want to strike out and do a fucking diss track, and then say some shit, is you crazy or is you crazy? That's why the social justice warriors are pissed the fuck off. And I understand that. There is already this stigma about that in the black community. And Drake, you basically just perpetuated the stereotype. You just dissed this nigga because he spazzed out on Twitter. But when you have depression and stuff like that, you do shit like that. Just like when Amanda Bynes went off and was talking about her dad was molesting her and all this stuff. Oh, she crazy, she crazy, she crazy. She got, she got checked in for mental health issues right after that, didn't she? So this is not uncommon. But, again, Kanye too. Because Kanye and Drake are supposed to be the sensitive rappers. They're a little bit too goddamn sensitive and they got their panties in a twist over a bunch of shit. It's a difference. If Kid Cudi got his panties in a twist over some shit, I'm talking about whoever, yada, 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 and then comes out like, hold on, like I was like way too peeled up because I was self-medicating because this is what's going on and I'm going to check myself in the rehab. Do we not look at that as a step forward? Because I do. That was a lot of strength to do that because of the stigma that black men have with or a black community, period, with mental health disorders. I just feel like, and shout out to DJ Academic, because he said this too, and I've seen it after the fact. It was a low blow. I'm not going to read him for it. It was a low blow, but you could have had whoever wrote your verses, whether it was you or somebody from the OVO sweatshop that wrote it, would have been very easily to still have came at Kid Cudi and not mentioned none of that. And never mentioned none of that. So, and the other thing, and the very, very last thing that pisses me off a little bit about it. These verses that you did to push to and push a T and Kid Cudi were way doper than back to back, way doper than your verses on no shopping, and hell, you never even said anything to Joe Budden. I'm actually in shock and all that you said something about Pusha T, because you know Pusha T is going to crush you, right? Lyrically, of course, because for the Drake stands out there, he can get on the track and fart and Bell Bib DeVoe is way out of it. And y'all will say he won. The Kid Cudi stuff, first of all, I don't even feel like you should have said nothing about Kid Cudi. Motherfuckers is out here saying you got ghostwriters and now you getting offended. Well, put something out there to prove that you ain't got ghostwriters, nigga. Like... It is what it is. Um... And a lot of us question your pen now. So push T ain't say nothing wrong. You got a questionable pen now. It you was exposed for having reference tracks and ghostwriters, and it's so funny because I keep equating all this shit to the election because on a larger scale, if you're not a hip hop person, maybe this will let you understand. Drake is like Hillary Clinton. These WikiLeaks is coming about these emails of all this shit she did. And people know about it, but they like, fuck it, I'm with her. I'm still not voting for Trump. 
That's how y'all is with Drake. We know the pen is fucking questionable. And quite honestly, there are some suspect things about Drake's character that I never knew before. Like when Lil Wayne came out and said he fucked his girlfriend while he was in prison. Like, that's your mentor, dude. Like, why would you do some shit like that? So, you know, and then you holding up party next door and all these people's songs you end up keeping for yourself and putting on your albums. That's not cool, dude. And that was wrong. And like I said, it would have been wrong for anybody to do it, but if it would have been an Eminem or a Lil Wayne or, I don't know, like maybe even like a young thug, like the motherfuckers that just say some wild shit and don't care, it don't fucking matter. You not that dude, Drake. And we live in the time of the social justice warrior. So you got to really be that motherfucker that don't care or keep your fucking mouth shut. Because Drake is right now getting drugged for filth on Twitter. For a diss track. Because he said somebody was crazy that's now that publicly said they have public publicly said they have mental health issues and is checking themselves in for rehab for that. And that's when you decided to come after this dude. All is fair in love and hip hop to me, but fuck you. The last thing I'm going to say about this, because myself, like I said, I have panic anxiety disorder. I have had panic attacks before and people have thought I was faking. People thought I wanted attention. I got sent from my job to the hospital because I had three in a row and I couldn't catch my breath. They sent me to the hospital. I had to take a psych evaluation, which I promise you, nobody wants to fucking do. It's embarrassing. And they kept me off of work for a few days and my boss legitimately text messaged me like she was offended that I was going to be off work. I left and went to the hospital from my job. With a doctor that said, you cannot go back to work until you see another doctor. Wanted it to be a psychiatrist. I just happened to have a appointment with my doctor in the next few days. I didn't want to be off that many days. So I asked him, was it okay for the regular doctor? The regular doctor kept me off two more days. And they've been treating me. I got questions. Well, is this job too stressful for you? No, bitch. I got an anxiety disorder. Sometimes it's other shit that ain't got nothing to do with nothing that I don't even know. Sometimes... It, like y'all say triggered on YouTube all the time. No, for real, that's some shit triggered. And you might not even know what the fuck triggered you. To, what happened? But I say this to say this. Mental health issues are not fake. They are real. Everybody does not handle them well. For me, I can handle mine without medication. I'm sure there are other people that can. Everybody can't. So, that's my review of Two Birds, One Stones. Take it for what it's worth. I mean, I know it wasn't really too much of a review of the song, but I just felt like that was a little bit more of an important issue to discuss. And when I do videos about important issues, nobody clicks on them. So, this is a review hidden in a review, I guess. So, once again, I'm going to go ahead and put the link up for breast cancer. Thank you for donating. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my Pink Ladies and my T-Birds. And, um, deuces.